I'm Jaden. Today we'll learn about problem solving using Polya's four step process. So first we'll talk a little about George Polya. Then we'll learn about his algorithm to solve word problems. After that I'll show you some work examples and I'll leave you with problems to practice on your own. George Polya is called the father of problem solving. He is from Hungary. But he was a professor of mathematics at Stanford University in America. He was the one who wrote the book, How to Solve It, which presents the steps on how to solve problems, which is also known as Polya's four-step process to problem solving. Here are the steps. Step 1. Understand the problem. Step 2. Devise a plan. Step 3. Carry out the plan. Step 4. Look back. To understand the problem, we first need to know the answers to the following questions. What is asked? What are the given facts? Then we look for a strategy to solve the problem. We can do guess and check. We can make a list. Or we can solve an equation that describes the problem. Or maybe a pattern can help. Drawing or illustrating the problem may also work. Some problems are also solved better using a formula. Now that we have devised a plan, we are now ready to solve the problem using that plan. But sometimes we later realize that our plan does not work. Don't worry because we can always try another way. Once the plan has successfully worked, we have to look back to know if we did the right thing. We can check the result if it fits the given information. We can also try to work on a different solution and see if we arrive at the same answer. Or we can check if we can use our solution to solve other problems. So now let us work on some examples. Example 1. Alina's class has set up a weekend bake sale to raise funds for their classmate, whose dad just lost his job. On the first day, they were able to earn 2,659 pesos. If their class was able to raise 2,075 pesos on the second day, how much did they earn in all? Let us try to understand the problem. First, let us check what is asked in the problem. What is asked? How much did Alina and her class earn in total in their weekend bake sale? What information has been given to us? What are the given information? They earn 2,659 pesos on the first day and they earn 2,075 pesos on the second day. So how will we solve the problem? Okay, so I think it is better if we try to describe the problem using an illustration. First, let us remember the money raised on each day. On the first day, Alina and her class was able to raise 2,659 pesos. On the second day, they were able to raise 2,075 pesos. So, to find the total amount raised in the weekend bake sale, we have to add together the amount raised in the first day and the amount raised on the second day. That was our plan. 
it is now time to execute the plan. So, 2,659 pesos on the first day, and 2,075 pesos on the second day have to be added together. Let us do this step by step. Let us start with the cents. You see the column pointed by the arrow? Let us start here. We have two zeros to be added together. So, 0 plus 0 equals 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. So, we put the answer, which is 0. Did you notice know there, there are many zeros? Then we move to the next column. Still, we have 0 plus 0, which is equal to 0. Now, we only have decimal point on the next column. So, we just copy the decimal point. Okay? Yeah, they're more like dots. Now, let us move to the ones column. Are we following the yellow arrow? On the ones place value, we have digits 9 and 5. 9 plus 5 equals 14. So, we put 4 down in the sum and carry 1 to the next place value. Now, let us move to the next place value or the tenth place. See that? Yellow arrow, we have digits 1, 5, and 7. Adding them together gives us 1 plus 5 plus 7 equals 13. Let's put 3 down in the sum. And carry 1 to the next place value or the hundredth place value. Okay, what number do we see on the hundredth place value? Again, follow the yellow arrow. We have 1, 6, and 0, which... When added together, it gives us 7. So we put 7 down in the sum. But there's nothing to carry over since 7 is less than 10. Now, the next place value is the 1000. What numbers do you see? You're right, we have 2 and 2 or 2 twos. Get my joke? Well, their sum is 4. Write 4 in the sum. There is nothing to carry over and we're down with addition. We already got the sum. Now time for a little grammar or English in this math equation. Since our numbers are in the thousands, we should not forget a specific and special type of comma. It's called the number comma. We should also not forget the peso sign or a P with two bars in the middle to know what quantity we are working with. Therefore, Lina and her class was able to raise 4,734 pesos in their weekend bake sale. Let us check our work. So, we need to do subtraction. Why? Addition is when you combine things to make a larger thing. Its symbol is a plus. Subtraction, on the other hand, is when you break down things to make a smaller thing. Its symbol is a short bar. Since we're working with addition in this equation, if we need to check the work, we need to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. Just like that, if we are working with subtraction on this equation, we need to do the opposite, or we need to add if we check the work. So, let us subtract the money raised on the first day from the total amount raised. Let's see if we can really get the amount raised on the second day. I know you can do this since I have already shown you how. Let's start with the last column. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is, well, you already know what's the answer. 0. We just have the decimal point here. This is to separate the cents from the whole pesos. We'll just copy the decimal point just like before. We're on the ones or units. On the ones, we have 4 minus 9. 4 is less than 9. You can see the less than symbol. It's always the first number. That's why it's less than. And you can see the hungry crocodile, it only eats the larger number. Yeah, 
This isn't exactly a crocodile, but you can imagine it as a hungry crocodile, which only eats the larger. If, if it's less than, then it's facing, right? If it's greater than, it's facing less. Mm -hmm. So we need to borrow one from three in the tenth place. Three becomes two and four becomes 14. So we now have a number that is greater than nine in the ones place, which makes subtraction possible. 14 minus nine equals five. By the way, if you're doing horizontal addition, like the numbers and symbols are in a straight line, something like that, then the symbol for the equal sign are two subtraction signs. One on top of the other. That can apply for both addition and subtraction. But if it's vertical addition, the numbers are are moving down, then the equal sign is a long and straight box. So anyways, write five down the box. And let's move to the tenth place. Two is less than five. So we need to borrow from seven in the hundredth place to make two greater than five. This makes seven become six and two become twelve. Twelve minus five is seven. Write seven on the difference below the bar. By the way, the sum is the total for addition and for subtraction, the total is the difference. And move to the hundredth place. Notice that we have six and six. They are equal, so we do not have to borrow. Six minus six is, well, zero. Write zero on the difference. And move to the thousandth place. We need to get four minus two. Since four is greater than two, we do not need to borrow any. Now you can see the greater than. 4 minus 2 is red 2 down on the difference. Of course, we need to follow math punctuation. So anyways, copy the peso sign and the comma. We got 2,075 pesos, which is the money raised in the second day. We are correct. We do the same thing to check if we will get the amount raised in the first day when we subtract the amount raised in the second day from the total money and we also get the exact amount this means that our plan worked and we did the right thing Hooray! time for another problem example two gary recycled 200 cans in june in july he recycled 350 cans how many more cans did he recycle in july than in june let us understand what the problem is about by identifying what it is asking us to do. It asks us how many more cans did Gary recycle in July than in June? Here are the given. He recycled 200 cans in June and 350 cans in July. What do you think should we do to solve the problem? Okay, let us use first let us pretend that this can represents 50 cans because it is impossible to draw 200 and 350 cans on this screen in June Gary was able to recycle 200 cans so we have four yellow cans because 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 or 4 times 50 is 200 in July he was able to recycle 350 can that is 7 times 50 so that is why we have 7 orange can how many more can did Gary recycle in July than in June we need to do subtraction subtract the number of the can of cans recycled in June from the number of cans recycled in July that is our plan now let us do the math 350 minus 200 equals 150 so, 0 minus 0 is, well, you already know. 5 minus 0 is 5. And 3 minus 2 is 1. 
before Gary recycled 150 more cans in July than in June. Let us check our work. What is the opposite of sub subtraction? Hmm. This is how we did it. Let us add 200 and 150. We're doing the opposite of subtraction, that is addition. We must get the number of cans recycled in July. 100 plus 150 is 350. We did get the number of cans in July. Now let us try subtracting 150 from 350. We should get the number of cans recycled in July. 350 minus 150 is 200. We did the number of cans in June. Hooray! Now it is your turn. The first exercise is made by my mom. One sunny day, Carl and his friends, Troy and Jim, went out to fish. They were out for two hours. On the first hour, Carl caught a kilo of fish, Jim caught two kilos, while Troy caught none. On the second hour, Jim caught a kilo of fish, while Carl, Carl caught a kilo more than Jim, and Troy caught none. Did you notice how Troy never catches any fish? But here's the point. How many kilos of fish did the three boys catch in all? And who among the boys had the greatest catch? The size two was made by me. One day, Steve and Bob went to a fish and chip shop. Steve paid 300 pesos while Bob paid 500 pesos more than Steve. Robert came along and paid 800 pesos. How much money did Bob pay and how much money did the boys pay on? Hey! 